So I built this out in about 15, 20 minutes, just thinking about it and trying to summarize it down. And this equates to some of the things that you need to know to get into cybersecurity. Now, this is not a complete list. Uh, this is the core basis to be considered somebody extremely junior who has never had a job before. Uh, and unfortunately, what most people don't like to hear is that you actually graduate into cybersecurity after a long and successful career as a software development engineer, because a lot of people want to skip that and they want to just go into basic IT or even worse, they want to skip basic IT. And that is a recipe for disaster. You will never get hired that way uh, by anybody competent, at least. Uh, the cold hard fact is that IT and help desk and sysadmin, they are great ways to get into cybersecurity because they help you understand people. But if you don't have those skills, you will never advance to the point where you'll be technical enough to actually be able to help people or do the job well. In this case, what I've done is I've scripted out dev skills, and I've basically said, look, you have to start as a developer who does nothing with cybersecurity at all, and you have to know these things. This list was created from some of my experiences at Microsoft and other large organizations that would actively go out of their way to test you. For example, the very first day that I started at Microsoft Research uh, many years ago, back in 2005, uh, I came to my desk the first day, and my computer was in a pile on my desk. That's right. My computer was in pieces. It wasn't put together. Um, there was a case under the desk, but it was very clear that all the parts were piled on my desk. Or rather, most of the parts were piled on my desk. And so the issue there was that I had to go around, build the computer, find the parts that were missing, ask somebody for those parts. They would reach behind their back and go, oh, yeah, by the way, here's your, your video card. And so the, the big issue here is that they will test you. You have to have basic IT knowledge in addition to software development knowledge, in addition to research knowledge. And so if you don't have knowledge of the hardware and you can't research and you don't know software and you don't know your tools, then you're not going to be an effective cybersecurity engineer. A lot of people want to you know, watch those old movies like hackers or whatever, and they think, oh, well, I want to be like that. I want to be elite. The reason that people like that were leap was because they understood that they had to hold themselves away and research and read RFCs and rainbow manuals and learn and understand everything about everything because it's a cross domain subject. OK, it is not one small thing. You cannot say, oh, well, I only know about RAM sticks in single inline module memory modules for SIMS, which, by the way, is a very old hardware technology. And that's all I know. And I'm going to be elite. No, unfortunately, that's not how it works anymore. There was a time when double inline memory modules were new and they were a great thing to learn about. And you could learn about the timing of them and the error correcting techniques used in the, the newer versions of them and all those things. But now that stuff's normal now. And if you see a single inline memory module, it's considered too old to really be used for most things now. And so learning about hardware architecture and learning about things is part of the, the key here. You're not just learning one thing, you're learning everything. And that's what it takes to be an elite hacker. Now, the important thing about this is that you are doing your, both your low-level learning, which some people have already kind of laid claim to, um, and you're also trying to understand how things fit together. Now, that is my domain. I'm giving you the map. Uh, the, the big thing here is that you look at this map and you can see that there's a lot to learn. This is just basic junior software development engineer stuff. This is not super elite cybersecurity researcher stuff. This is, oh, look, you're a noob. 
but you put in the work and I respect that stuff. And so if you try to tell me that you are a cybersecurity researcher and you don't know the things on this screen, I'm going to laugh at you, call you a noob, and dismiss you. Or at least that's what people would have done back in the day. Nowadays, I'm a little more empathetic. But you should understand that if you haven't put in the work to understand these things, if you can't find a, a stack of computer parts on a desk or in a dumpster and put them together and get them online on the network, maybe this isn't for you. And so. If you are telling yourself that you can skip working in IT or you can skip dealing with, you know, understanding programming or maybe you just want to work in security but you don't want to be a software development engineer, that's the wrong way of thinking about it. And yeah, those jobs exist. They're harder to get into and they have no career advancement and they are – very competitive because there's a lot of people who want them because a lot of people want the, the easy jobs where they don't have to learn anything and they can be lazy and they can click the button and let the software do the work. But I've always been the sort of person who wanted to code the software. And so <clears throat> you are going to have more opportunities if you go higher on the stack and you have more skills. And here you see you've got dev skills for, for software. That means you understand different languages by family. For example, C and C++ are part of the same family. Guile, Scheme, and Lisp are part of the same family. COBOL, ALGO, those are all part of the same family technically. And so the end result is that you should branch out by family and you can learn as many different families of programming languages as you can. But get to know the the core parents of the each family and understand them well learn c learn and understand some basic assembly do the stuff to learn the things okay. because you're going to also need to learn the processes the software development life cycle the swdl there that's a big thing there's agile there's a bunch of things there and so the fun thing about this is that you are going to you are actively going to under, need to understand these things to be able to work with your peers and to understand where things went wrong if you're working in cybersecurity because part of that job is to be able to do an after action report and explain to them here's how you fix the thing and here's how you make sure it doesn't happen again if you don't have those skills, then you're not qualified for the job. Now, the end result of all this is that once you've been able to get to a point where you can throw together a PC from parts you found in your dumpster, and you can actually start doing deployments to the cloud, and you understand software architecture enough to build big projects, and you understand hardware enough to be able to understand the nuances of different types of hardware and threading issues and things like that. So you can start looking for those deep multi-threading bugs and those memory copy problems and all the fun things that can happen there because you understand your tool set. You have a good, you're good at the pen and paper. You can plan things out. You can use your IDE to write the, the code. You can do all those things because you've done the research. You've looked at the RFCs. You understand the creator techniques. And yeah, you've even gone to the library and tried checked out the card catalog because guess what? Back in the day before Google, we had to know two different types of card catalogs. We had to know the Dewey Decimal System, which is older, and the newer Library of Congress system that libraries are thankfully updating to or have already updated to in most cases. It's very rare you'll find one that still uses the Dewey Decimal System these days. But you'll find a lot of older libraries or very isolated libraries might be. The fun thing about that is to get funding. A lot of them have updated, so that may not be an issue anymore. But the fact is, if you're aware of the Dewey Decimal System and you can actually use it effectively, that's part of being leaked. And so 
the thing is, you need to understand that working in cybersecurity is not as simple as, ooh, I'm going to have this job. And I'm going to sit at my desk all day and I'm going to look at some random tripwire application that sits there and logs events and then sends me little notifications when things happen. That's not all the job is. Yes, that is part of the job in some cases, but those roles typically don't have any advancement opportunity. You're probably just going to be a monkey on a desk doing the same thing for the rest of your life. And at some point they're going to say, look, that person isn't young enough to really do this anymore. They haven't decided to try to advance themselves. We don't really trust them anymore. Let's just get rid of them. And oh, by the way, put them on the list so that they can't get work again because they might be a threat. And at that part, you're done. And so you should think, be thinking about constant improvement. You should be thinking about advancing yourself. You should be thinking about advancing your skills. It is not a simple matter of, I want to do the one thing and I'm going to do that for the rest of my life. That doesn't work. Okay. And it's kind of shows that you don't know what you're doing if you think otherwise. Cybersecurity is something that you graduate into. It is something that you put years of blood, sweat, and tears into to learn the technology, to learn how to code, to learn how to research, to learn how to understand patterns and hardware and deployments and pipelines. And then eventually you figure out that something's wrong. You know enough to be able to say, hey, this is wrong because of this other thing. And at that point, you're off to the races. But it's not something that you just do day one. And the people who think that they can skip basic IT skills and not know how to administrate their own systems after building it from scratch are not going to be able to know what they're doing. And they're not going to be able to compete with the people that do. Because I guarantee you, if you can't build your parts, your system from parts, Load it with an operating system after attaching it to the network, get it online, and then do the basic systems administration on your first day on the job. They're just going to say it was a bed hire and let you go. I saw other people fail this test. I did not fail this test. And that was why I got to stay. Think about that.